Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is the Series 7 guru coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas. The best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. But the uh, best paid supplement, if you don't already have one, is Kaplan QBank. With my Guru 10 discount code at checkout, get it for about $60. And uh, we're agnostic, we'll help you with anything. But uh, for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look. This came up in our live stream every Tuesday, 5 p.m., uh, join us for our weekly Q&A live stream. It's available afterwards as a podcast, both on the YouTube channel and Spotify. But sometimes when people have questions, if we don't get to it on a whiteboard and live stream, I promise to do it afterward as a video explication and then post it in the video replay at the appropriate timestamp, as well as post it to the channel. So the request that came up uh, in the just concluded uh, Tuesday live stream was QID 12829100. Uh, an investor purchases a newly issued convertible bond at par. So you should definitely know that means I paid $1,000 for that bond. The bond is convertible at 40. There is no draw on Series 7 in which you're not going to encounter a parity calculation, a convertible question. The minute you see the word convertible, you go, oh, man, I bet parity is coming. Parity is the word for equal. Anyways, really important point. You can't do anything with the conversion price. When given the conversion price, you need to establish the conversion ratio. That's really, really important. So remember, these conversion terms are based on par. So the way you're going to do that is you're going to take par and you're going to divide it by the conversion price to establish the conversion ratio. 25 shares to one for each bond. If you turn it in, you can get 25 shares of the common. So that's really important that we reset to par or take par. I would stop by the minute I get this, by the way, and do this as I go. Usually I say, read the full question, but I'm almost, when I see the, the pivot words here, know what's coming. Okay, so three years later, that's important. So that means we've been at risk for more than 12 months. So this is going to be long-term. The underlying common stock is trading at 50. That's important. That's the current market price of the stock. And they ask me uh, if I sell it at a $50 premium over parity. So I've got to figure out what is parity of the bond. When, what bond price is equal to what stock price? So you're going to have to do parity of the bond or parity of the stock. Here I got to figure out parity of the bond because they're telling me I'm going to sell the bond. So the way I get that is I take the 25 shares that I can get at $50 and parity of the bond is $12.50. So you're definitely going to have to do parity of the bond. Now, if it's parity of the bond, we multiply. If it's parity of the stock, we divide. They tell me that it's a $50 premium over the parity price. The parity price is $1,250. So $50 over that means I sold the bond for $1,300. And there is. Okay, well, now we just go back. By the way, there's not. it's not a tax event to convert your bonds. So if you convert your convertible preferred stock or your convertible bonds, that's not a taxable end. What is taxable is when you sell this bond. You didn't convert, but you sold the bond. You paid for the bond, 1000 That was your cost basis. You sold the bond for $1,300. So you made $300 over three years. So that's a $300 long-term capital gain. That is the answer to this question. So remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard, and I'll see you for the next explication request. There's another one that came up in tonight's live stream for Series 6, D6. So that'll be up shortly. Bye-bye.